Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to learn about a media access control protocol that is known as CSMA CD. Okay, so what it means? It's carrier sense multiple access plus you also provide the feature of collision detection. Okay, so we had carrier sensing. Okay, that was the first good thing that we brought okay so simplest one for multiple access is aloha okay so a b c and d let's say they are on a ethernet wire they are all connected through that medium and in simple aloha or pure aloha anyone has data to send so they will transmit without sensing if the channel is idle or busy and now what happens if let's say a starts transmitting when it has data and if C was already transmitting, then there will be collision, okay? And the both the frames will be destroyed, okay? So here the problem was we were not sensing that if the channel is busy or idle, okay? So carrier sense brought the idea that now before transmitting, let's say A has data. Now this is the channel, okay? So before transmitting, it will just check that is someone else sending something on the wire okay and so they sense the channel and find if it is busy or not and if it is not busy so the node sends data okay so still carrier sense has a problem that the thing is that when you transmit bits okay so it takes time so i transmit a frame it will slowly move like not slowly but it will move like this okay so it will be moving and let's say the bits from a have moved till here when c senses the channel so these bits have not come to c yet and he senses the channel to be idle so he will start transmitting but then this his bits will collide with that of a and there will be collision okay so carrier sensing helps but still there is a chance of collision because the bits are signals that take time in traveling even though they are traveling with speed of light or something okay but they still take time and if you sense in between that then there will be collision so what collision detection does now is that it even tries to avoid these collisions so what happens so here they are showing this is the time axis and this is the distance so at t1 time so first bit of a is transmitted okay so it's traveling like this so distance is traveled is this much and time taken is this much now let's say that at time t2 so where is your at time t2 so a's signal has only traveled till here this point so c senses the channel and it is idle okay because at this moment your a has only traveled till here so c senses the channel it's idle it starts transmitting but in time t3 so this time a signals come here and it collides with c so what will happen now the collision takes place at t3 so its transmission time was t2 t3 minus t2 and then these signals from c will travel and at t4 it might reach a and then there will be collision okay so the collision is detected by the node okay so it cannot be detected in between that's why so these bits from c will be starting traveling at time t2 okay and when only they these signal travel this whole distance and reach a so a will detect collision so this collision detection also keeps on happening okay it means that while i'm sending i will also be detecting collision okay so it will be a kind of loop while you are sending so in fact you detect 
any collision okay so we are detecting collision too okay so this is happening so i'm sending and at the same time i'm seeing if any collision is there so what will happen in the worst case so worst case what will happen is i and a and d are let's say the farthest two nodes on the lan then a starts transmitting and let's say it takes tp time okay propagation delay from a to d so now if let's say when it was just reaching d senses the channel okay so now what will happen he will find that okay channel is idle and he will transmit and there will be collision and it will be detected only at 2 tp okay so this is the vulnerable period okay so if we move forward so let's try to see so now what happens okay so this we have already done so this one so collision occurs and this is the part of the frame so this was transmitted for c and so c detects collision and aborts first so first c detects collision and at t4 a also detects collision then so let's try to think about one problem to clear our concept so a network using csma cd okay so it uses csma cd has a bandwidth of 10 mbps okay so it can send data at the rate of 10 megabits per second if maximum propagation time is 25.6 microsecond okay so from a to d the farthest node let's say this is the maximum propagation time i start sending here the signal travels and it takes 25.6 microsecond what is the minimum size of a frame so now let's try to understand this concept of minimum size of a frame so i a sends the frame okay it will take 25.6 microseconds to reach the other end or the farthest node now what we said is that in collision csms cd so while a is transmitting it is also detecting collision and when it detects that okay whenever it was sending and it detects so let's try to see one more thing so when i come here okay so when let's say c was sending and whenever he sees that okay there is collision so let's say frame takes 5 microsecond for transmission and only after three mi 2 microsecond of transmission C finds that okay there was collision so it will not now send the rest of the packet which will another which will take another 3 microseconds to transmit because it has already detected a collision so we are here so it takes 25.6 microsecond to the propagation delay now a which is sending the frame can detect collision only when it is still sending the frame if it has sent the frame and after that somehow let's say the propagation delay is very large okay so what will happen i have a frame that just let's say that it takes only 30 microsecond to transmit now what will happen my first frame bit reaches here at 25.6 microsecond and last frame what will happen 30 microseconds are taken for transmission okay transmit that frame now what will happen is that 25.6 microsecond is for traveling time and 30 seconds microsecond i was transmitting so total it will take 30 plus 25.6 microsecond so it will take how much so it is around 55.6 microsecond in that all of the bits will reach d but let's say what happens is that there is collision okay when the transmission was so what will happen now 
all the frames the last bit of the frame will be sent as at 55.6 microsecond then what happens is that then also if you think when it receives the first frame which was at bit at 20.6 microsecond now if there was a collision it will take another 25.6 microsecond for the error collision to reach a so it will be total will be how much so it will be around 50 microseconds so in that case i can detect collision because i was still transmitting but let's say if my frame time was only 10 microsecond then what will happen so when 30 after 30 microsecond here what happened i stopped sending the frame but my first this total will so i stopped sending the frame at 30 microsecond but this collision will reach me at 55 microseconds so it means i will not be able to detect that so it means that your frame size should be minimum twice of propagation time that much of time it must take to send a frame so this will decide your minimum time so why let's try to see this concept again so a and b are two farthest frame okay and this sends i this takes tp amount of time let's say the whole frame takes me tf amount of time if tf is less than twice tp what happens so i have collision okay so i will let's say tp was what we took it is 25 microsecond and my tf was just 30 micro second so at time t is equal to 0 i start transmitting okay t is equal to 0 start and then what will happen at t is equal to 25 microsecond first frame will reach here first bit and what will happen is last bit will reach here at 30 plus 25 55 microsecond but let's say I will stop sending, A will stop sending the bits at 30 microsecond. Then he will not be detecting if it, there is a collision. And let's say there was a collision even in the first bit. So to reach again here, it will take 25 microseconds. So it will start, the signal will come here at 25 microsecond. Collision will be detected at 50 microsecond. But now A is not sensing the did collision so for detection it should be still sending the bits of the frame even after twice tp for minimum twice tp okay so this should be your minimum time of the frame if b is the bit rate so b bits per second okay and your time is this one so this will be your minimum frame size and that's what we were discussing so tfr the minimum transmission time should be this and our 10 mbps channel will then multi we multiply this and we get 512 bits or 64 bytes should be our minimum frame size so this is how you decide the frame size based on your maximum propagation delay So this is the flow diagram for CSMA CD. So we start, we have number of attempts is zero. If a station wants to send a frame, we apply any one of the persistent method, okay? One persistent is, we have already discussed in last class, in the CSMA lecture, you can see. One persistent, I check the channel, continuously keep on checking it and if it is, idle then i will send it non persistent i will keep on checking channel okay and when it is idle we will wait for a random amount of time then we send it okay 
for p persistent if i am sensing the channel i find it idle with probability p i send it the frame with probability 1 minus p i differ okay and then again sense in the next time slot okay if it is idle then i send otherwise i back off okay so what happens here so i apply any one of the persistent method let's say i just continuously keep on checking the channel if it is idle i send okay which is per one persistent so now what happens if transmission is done or collision detected okay so our transmission is done or collision is detected okay if transmission is done or collision is detected so if it is not true if i'm still transmitting then i will keep on transmitting and receiving if a collision is detected then what will happen or transmission is done so there was no collision detected then there is success if there was collision detected while i was transmitting so i will send a jamming pulse to whole of the ethernet okay so that other people also know that now you should not transmit and i will increase my attempt if that attempt is less than 15 i will send try again otherwise i will abort so what will happen now if my attempt is less than 15 so this is called exponential back off so here what i do is i choose a random number r which is between 0 to 2 to the power of k minus 1 this k initially was 0 when i failed once it became 1 when i failed twice k became 2 when i failed thrice it became 3 and so on let's say i failed thrice so i will choose a random number between 0 to 2 to the power of 3 which is 8 minus 1 i will choose a random number between 0 to 7 so i sense the channel okay i wait i failed in transmission i will wait for time tb what is this back off time it is random number that i chose into the propagation time okay or r into tfr which is the minimum frame size so i will wait for this amount of time and again try out so this is so average transmission time of a frame is tfr maximum propagation time is tp so this way it explains csma cd so i hope you understand this and collision how do we detect okay so there should be some physical mechanism so if we will check the energy of the channel okay if there is it is idle the energy is lowest okay almost zero if there is collision then there is highest energy level if it is just busy frame transmission then it's kind of if this is plus one this will be plus two this will be zero okay so energy level of transmission and of course csma cd has much better throughput compared to your aloha or csma okay it almost many times it is achieves uh, 50 percent to 90 percent throughput okay so i hope you understand this thanks a lot